Hello, this is Semantic Sense, and today I'm going to walk you through a tutorial on how to create an animation frame by frame. So, uh, what I've got here is a finished product for um, uh, for uh, an image that I made an animation from. Uh, I basically took an image of um, the steps in human evolution, uh, isolated every single step in it, and then made an animation from it uh, using our effect. Um, so here it is. Let me just show it to you. So as you can see, the ape stands up into a human. Um, so basically, um, yeah. Um, and we can also do de-evolution through this too, just by going backwards. <laughs> Um, what we're going to do today is we're going to uh, use Photoshop to create a series of bars um, that will essentially be a picket fence w through which you can see uh, strips uh, of frames from. So if I were to remove this bar series from our image, what you would see are, are, are these strips uh, essentially. And these are all uh, strips from an image that I'm about to show you online. Um, so there. Uh, there are all the strips we need. So this tutorial is going to cover essentially um, things like uh, repeating transformations, uh, creating an animation from silhouettes, uh, using the select tool uh, for specific regions and specific ratios uh, of selections, uh, and, so, uh, and some worthy shortcuts like the deselect command and also the paint bucket command. So let's get started. What I'm going to do is immediately purge my palette. I'm going to delete everything on it. Um, and I'm just going to uh, close everything I have. That I'm not saving either, which is a bad habit. So let me go to Chrome. I'm going to go to the Wikipedia article on silhouettes. And I, uh, earlier today, I found the image that I wanted to use for this just by going down to their um, to their to the image resources in the article and I found this nice uh, uh, this this nice series of silhouettes so uh, this this effect is only possible to pull off with silhouettes really um, but uh, you can work with it um, if you've ever imagined uh, like you know uh, driving by a picket fence or something like that and seeing someone run on the other side the effect we're going to pull off is going to be somewhat like that where basically uh, there's going to be a changing image behind the picket fence um, and you're only going to be see strips of, uh, of that image but ultimately um, with, with these really small bars we can recreate that effect um, if we scale um, that picket fence down to the size of some uh, of, of, of you know three, three pixel wide bars a pixel is incredibly small so I'm sure you don't even know what I'm talking about, so let me just get started. I'm gonna, just going to move this uh, you know, Creative Commons licensed uh, image over to my Photoshop um, application uh, f uh, free of charge, and I'm really unlikely to get sued. In fact, it's impossible to get sued since I know that the license is Creative Commons. So uh, here we ha have... Um, uh, you know each step in in the human evolution, and I'm going to uh, later on. I'm going to isolate each of these images um, into frames, so that each of them can become the frames that we use in our animation. Uh, let me just move on to creating another palette, however, uh, using Command N um, uh, uh, to create our bar series. This is what we're going to need to create our. Uh, uh, this is what we're going to do to create our essentially our picket fence through which we'll see the strips uh, of the frames that we'll create using the bar frames as well, or using the bar series as well. So I'm sure you still don't know what I'm talking about, so let me just get down to it. Um, we're going to create uh, some bar series that are fixed size, um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create each bar so that it is essentially the amount of frames that we have minus one. So in this picture, we have we're going to have four frames the monkey is going to move, uh, or the primate is going to move and evolve um, into uh, another primate, then another primate, and then finally a human, or homo sapiens. So basically we'll have four frames, um, but I'm going to create a bar that is uh, basically uh, three pixels wide, the amount of frames we have minus one. Now this is really important 
uh, you need to make sure that you have a, a consistent uh, uh, you have a consistent animation and that there are no white spaces in it. So uh, by going by that simple equation, you'll have created uh, um, the proper uh, bar series that is needed for this. So here I'm going to go ahead and uh, zoom in on this bar on this specific bar since it's so incredibly small. Um, and then I'm going to uh, zoom in on it. Here it is. Um, and then get it positions uh, positioned perfectly in my uh, in my palette. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, basically create a new layer um, using uh, layer new, and I can use Shift Command N to actually create this new layer. And I'm going to do that. Um, so this layer is going to actually be called the bar series um, because it's what we're going to use in our other image or our other palette where. Um, uh, that our picture is waiting in. So I'm basically going to um, press G and that's going to trigger my paint bucket to uh, jump up and then I'm going to make sure that my primary color in my color palette is black and then I'm going to press it um, and essentially that will give me uh, this this bar. Um, so what I've done is I've essentially created a bar um, and I'm going to deselect it. I've created it on this new uh, this new layer, and you can't see it here because the bar is so incredibly small. Um, and I'm going to uh, transform it um, using Option Command T. Now, usually you would trigger op, uh, transform using Command T, but the Option Command T allows you to make whatever transform you perform a step, and then uh, using another command that I'll tell you about afterwards. You can actually repeat that step over and over and over again as many times as you like. And you'll be able to see that. Uh, I'll just get down to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this over. Um, yeah, this the, the command option uh, T also creates a new uh, a duplicate of the actual the current layer. Um, and then by pressing enter, I've uh, automatically completed the step. So what I'm going to do to uh, repeat the step is do Shift Option Command T, and this is just going to allow me to uh, basically hold down uh, Shift Option Command and then press T as many times as I like to create a new layer. And as you can see over here, I'm creating multiple layers um, just just based off of that. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep copying these layers, and now I have like 20 bars. Now, what I can do from this point on is I can actually uh, go over here. Uh, I'm going to zoom out just so that you can see that 20 bars have been created. Um, and move over here, and here are the 20 bars. And I'm going to merge all of these layers together um, by holding down Shift and selecting the first or last uh, layer in the series. I'm going to um, gonna hold down Shift and then go down to uh, my um, my first or last image, and then select, or, and then uh, click it basically, and then uh, do a right click to bring up uh, a merge layer, or or my um, my layer options. So I'm going to merge all the layers so that they're now one. Um, so we now have one of these. And guess what I'm going to do now? I'm just going to press Option Command T like we did before, and that's going to dupl duplicate uh, duplicate the duplicate the layer and allow me to basically move it over uh, one step and essentially perform uh, the first uh, step uh, and uh, basically allow me to create a repetitive step that I can do over and over, perform over and over again. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm doing what we were doing before only now exponentially. So I press enter and there it's created. Um, so now all I need to do is do what I did before and press Shift Option Command T, and it'll immediately create more of these. And as you can notice, this fills out the page a lot faster than I could uh, could have ever done using the other method. Now I could do that step again. Or I could, you know, uh, perform the option, and uh, I could perform the uh, selection process and move it over and make sure that it's actually a pixel apart from uh, the last bar, as you notice I did before. Um, but that takes too much time. It's, it's unnecessary at this point. This is moving fast enough. So now I'm going to merge all these layers again um, just because we want it to be one consistent layer. 
So all the layers are merged. Now they're together and we have a bar series. Um, now if we remove this background, you'll notice that in between the bars, there's actually nothing. There, like the, you know, it's just the four. It's just the background color, which in this case is the, uh, which is these tiled squares. So what I'm going to be allowed to do with this layer is actually uh, move it.